Hello there ladies and gentlemen. In this tutorial we are going to review everything that we learned so far. And now you may ask yourself why isn't the drawing board on the screen? Well because we are going to review what we learned so far on an actual command and we are going to revisit the top command. Okay because I gave you my word I mean, not really, but I told you that we we would uh, revisit it. And so we are going to revisit it and we are going to explain all of the columns. And by explaining all of the columns, we are going to touch upon all of the concepts we just learned in this uh, section. Uh, what we won't touch upon is other commands like PS uh, and the other commands. But basically, I thought that this was sort of a, a very good thing to do because we would review all of the concepts and basically some of these uh, these uh, columns which we view in top are also relevant to PS and all of the other commands we covered. So definitely uh, do pay attention, okay? So let's enter top and uh, so let's write top and press enter and let's look at the output produced by top and explain what does it all mean. Okay, so let me just press Q so that I actually exit top and let me just go to go to here, okay, at the beginning. So first we have some information about current time. Okay, we have some information about the current time. Uh, how long my computer, this is the current time, how long my computer has been running uh, and how many users are logged in. Okay, so this is just some information. Then we have load averages. How many process? Uh, how many processes is my computer executing in the last minute, in the last five minutes, and in the last fifteen minutes? Then we get to talk about tasks. How many tasks are there on the computer? One is running. Okay, there are two hundred twenty-two total. One is running. Two hundred and twenty-one are sleeping zero are stopped and zero are zombie. Now, what does running mean? Well, running mean, means it is currently executing. Sleeping means waiting for something to happen, such as data from a device to resume their execution. So basically sleeping, uh, sleeping ta tasks are actually just kind of waiting for, uh, for some things to happen in order to resume their, uh, their execution. Stopped. Uh, means no pro uh, that that those are the processes which we have manually stopped okay and since we haven't stopped manually any processes we have zero processes which are stopped and zombie processes are processes whose parent process doesn't exist anymore okay so if we have a child process without its corresponding parent process then that would be a zombie process then this number right here uh, CPU percentage S, uh, and then this number right here. Uh, but basically, uh, yeah, let's focus on this number right here. He is telling us how much percentage of the CPU is being used for the user processes. Okay, so for the user processes, 6.2% of the CPU is being used. For system processes or for kernel processes, 0.8% of the CPU is being used. NI, uh, which is right here, is for nice low priority processes. So 5.8% of the CPU is going to nice, or another word for nice is low priority processes. And then we have ID, which basically means that 86.1% of my processor is idle, okay? Uh, WA uh, is, uh, indicates how, my, how much of my processor is waiting for some input-output tasks. Uh, high is the time spent between processing hardware interrupts. SI is the time processing software interrupts, okay? And, and uh, I think I maybe failed to mention this in, in that tutorial, but you can also have software interrupts, okay? You can have hardware interrupts. They, they come from the keyboard from the mouse, etc., And you can also have software interrupts. That's when a program triggers an interrupt. Okay, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned that, but I'm mentioning, mentioning it now. So just be aware of that fact as well. Uh, then you have ST, 
uh, SDs relevant to virtual environments. You don't really need to know what those are. Uh, that needn't concern you, okay? Uh, then you have MIB memory, okay? So MIB mem and MIB swap tell you how much RAM and how much swap space. So MIB mem is how much RAM and MIB swap is how much swap space is being used uh, at this specific time that the top is running, okay? And so basically you have how many total memory, how many free, uh, how many memories free, uh, what, uh, how many memories used, and uh, how many, uh, that is, uh, yeah, what, uh, what number of memory measured in megabytes, uh, maybe bytes, so not megabytes, but maybe bytes is used for a buffer that is cache, okay? And basically you don't really need to understand these things, just kind of focus on the free column. If the free column is really low, then that's pretty bad. And uh, really low is relative from computer to computer. I think Google can help you. So actually if you have some like very low number, for example, 10.03, you can type in 10.03, MIB mem, is that good? Or you can ask someone else. Basically, you know, th these things are relative based on how much RAM you have, etc. But basically the more free RAM you have, the better, uh, and the less used uh, RAM you have, the better, because the used RAM means that that RAM is actually used for some processes, okay? But also, uh, by that analogy, like why would you buy a lot of RAM if you are not going to use it, right? So again, this is all relative uh, to how you are using your computer. So definitely do feel to consult, uh, feel free to consult Google uh, in the case you uh, are kind of looking for approximate numbers uh, right here. Okay, and basically swap, you don't really necessarily have to understand a lot about it. Basically, I think I touched upon this, maybe. I'm not really sure if swap space is used uh, to kind of expand your RAM. So this is, swap is actually uh, similar to the virtual memory concept we discussed, I don't know when, but I think we discussed it in, actually in this section. So swap is actually relatively similar, but I think there are certain differences. And to be fairly honest with you, I'm not really sure like by heart, what are the differences? I do know that swap space is used to compensate for your RAM, but virtual memory is used to uh, ex also expand your uh, memory, basically. Uh, but those two are different, uh, especially because swap is kind of used to expand your RAM and virtual memory is used to uh, kind of like switch uh, certain memory uh, chunks between the RAM and your permanent storage device. Uh, but again, you know, those are just technical details. You shouldn't be concerned with them. You should mostly be concerned with this and um, and with the free columns, okay? And also if you're using a lot of swap, if if you ha if you see that you're using a lot of swap and that your RAM is free, uh, that uh, a low uh, a low number of your RAM is free and you're using a lot of swap, that's going to, going to be indicative that uh, you actually may consider upgrading your RAM or uh, buying new RAM uh, stuff like that. Okay. Okay. So now let's look at the columns available for each process. So PID is the user, uh, sorry, is the process ID. User is the user who owns the process. PR is the process priority. NI is the niceness value, we talked about this. VIRT is the total amount of memory consumed by the process. And again, virtual memory, I think I'm, I'm pretty positive that it is, uh, it definitely has some significant differences from the swap space. And just to remind you what virtual memory is, it's permanent storage device plus RAM. And swap is RAM plus a dedicated portion of a disk to compensate for the RAM, while virtual memory is, think of it as almost like the entire disk plus RAM. Okay, the entire permanent storage device plus RAM. You can think of it like that, it's not really accurate. And, you know, but just, for the purposes of this tutorial, I think that's going to be enough. RES is actually memory consumed by the process in RAM. So this is actually telling us that, for example, simple screen recorder is using, uh, you know, a lot of memory, basically uh, five, uh, 590,960 
bytes. I think I think this is measured in bytes. Okay, so that's a lot of a lot of memory. Um, then we are also having this SHR column. That is the amount of memory shared with other processes because processes can share memory. Uh, you know, if you're looking at the processes, there are certain cases where a process can say, okay, this part of my memory is shared and then other processes can access that. Okay, I didn't, I didn't mention this, but it, it is also possible. Uh, this is the process state, the says column. This is the process state. So is the process running? Is it sleeping? What is it doing? Uh, percentage CPU is how much CPU is the process using. Percentage memory is how much memory is the process using. Time plus is the total time uh, used uh, by the process since it started. And command is the name of the process okay so i can't we kind of reviewed everything i kind of grazed upon some of these things and so, uh, with some of the columns i went into more depth with some of it i went into less depth but basically i think i introduced every concept you need to understand even even if it was on a just very basic level like with the swap or the virtual uh, memory you kind of understand it very crudely, but you are kind of confident, okay, I, I kind of understand what is going on here, okay? And I think that, you know, for the level which I'm aiming at, which is, you know, so software engineers, most likely if you're a software engineer, you probably had some computer science education. Uh, and in that case, uh, you know, you are definitely, uh, you understand it was just sort of like a review. If you're a software engineer and you didn't have a computer science education, well, in that case, I definitely do suggest reading up on computer architecture, stuff like that, because it is really fundamental. You know, you're writing code for the computer and you really need to understand the computer. Now, I don't think you need to be an electrical engineer. This is just my opinion. I think you really need to understand like everything, uh, you know, which goes, uh, which uh, goes on in the hardware, but you do need to understand the computer at a very low level because you're foundationally um, using that, right? I mean, you can be writing a higher level language, but foundationally it is being executed very, very close to the hardware. So you need to understand it. And if you're a regular user, I think these conceptualizations, which I demonstrated to you are more than enough for you to kind of connect the dots and see, aha, uh -huh, this is for use for this, this is used for that. You also have the references in each of the tutorials if you want to read more, more uh, about that. And uh, yeah, I think that, you know, I definitely kind of explain things uh, that are that are uh, important. And the same goes for our system ad administrators and, you know, people who want to deal with information security. Definitely do pick up a, uh, pick up a book on a computer architecture. I definitely, although I don't do system administration or information security, I, do, I can imagine that it will be very useful for you to understand it. But again, these tutorials kind of give you a fairly so solid grasp of, okay, what is this? What is that? And uh, that's sort of my goal, okay? And if you disagree or if you agree with me and if you think, okay, these tutorials are awesome and maybe think these tutorials are bad, definitely leave me feedback, okay? Because I really like to understand how do you like these tutorials? Do you think they're good? Do you think they're bad? Because, you know, if a lot of people think they're bad, well, then they're bad. You know, if a couple of people think they're bad, but most people think they're awesome, well, that's amazing. I mean, you know, I'd be really flattered if that's the case. But again, you know, maybe you don't like my style of ex explanations. Maybe you don't like something else. So definitely do leave feedback uh, for how can I improve this. Although I will most likely pre-record the enti entire series, but I will read the comments. And then when I'm releasing another series, if I ever re release another series, I will improve upon that uh, feedback, okay? So thank you guys for watching. I hope we review the concepts and maybe even learn something new along the way. And uh, I will talk to you very soon.